Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Union Soccer <laughs> Podcast live from Union Training Facility, and we got the one, the only, Fafa Pico finally hopping on the podcast. Joe Tanzi, Sean Brace, Fafa, great to have you, my man. Thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, uh, let's start with this, because we're going to have some fun with this podcast real quick, but uh, the news, as we were just driving up here, uh, it's a business, and uh, it's something that regular Joes like Joe and myself won't, won't ever know, but uh, you walk in one day, and you guys are a family, and then the next day, one of you guys gets traded. And today, David Akam was one of those guys that got moved. Uh, just you know, speak on David Akam, speak on the fact of that he's been here and, and a big role of the success that the Union have had so far this season, and uh, just all in all on the move. Um, you know, it happened earlier in the season and preseason. Um, so now it's the second close friend of mine that, that goes. Um, we know what he's done in this league and, and other teams, and also now with ours. Uh, he's a great player, amazing player, and also a great friend. So um, it's obviously, uh, you know, it's tough to see him go, but we know he'll do well wherever he goes and bring his skill set to, to another squad. Um, I'll look forward to seeing him when we play against each other, um, and we'll stay in contact. Uh, the friendship lasts forever. And now you just want him to be happy wherever he goes and, and have continued success. Does something allow, does, does a thought go through your mind? And I know it's just fresh, it just happened, but does something allow you to believe like, okay, hey, there's more minutes. It's obviously a move like this makes, them, makes me believe that they believe in me. Um, you know, in general, I just, I always focus on me. You know, even if there's, uh, they can sign whoever, whoever signed. Uh, just, uh, I've done, I think, already what I've done for the club. And um, obviously, want to continue to do more and do better, but um, it never crosses my mind on on, uh, on what I can bring, or I don't really worry about minutes, um, or uh, or who's here, who's not. Um, obviously, uh, I think on the bigger scale, I, I enjoyed playing together with him, um, and also our friendship and relationship off the field was big. So um, you lose that, and that's probably the bigger thing I take from all of it. You guys have the one thing, at least I noticed from covering this this whole group is the locker room so tight and yeah. you've mentioned it with with CJ and, and with the deal with Keegan earlier in the year it's yeah. you guys just because they're gone doesn't mean you know you're done you know your relationship with them is over yeah. how, so how how does that you know how often you keep in touch with, with guys like CJ and, and kind of you know they you know especially CJ's had some success yeah. early in the season so how 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 proud are you to see some of these guys, you know, have these success out, out of this locker room? Um, yeah, I mean, we have a tight locker room. And uh, I think what people oftentimes don't realize, you know, just putting on a different jersey doesn't, um, doesn't change how you view your friend, you know. Mm -hmm. um, even you look at other sports, people that create these rivalries between athletes that are sometimes the best of friends, you know. Um, CJ and I FaceTimed yesterday or two days ago, you know. Every time CJ scores a goal, I'm happy, and I'll repost it even on my stories. Um, and that friendship lasts longer than soccer. Soccer's a game. We love it. I love it to death. But what's more important is my family, my close friends, and is everybody healthy, everybody's okay, and we genuinely care for each other mm -hmm. beyond this sport. Obviously, it's the sport that brought us together, but um, the bond we created, that lasts longer than the game, you know. We'll finish this game hopefully late 30s, and after that, you know, mm -hmm. there's a whole life ahead, and you know, I hopefully these guys will be a part of my life after that. Um, and I wish them the best, and I know they wish me the best. So, um, apart from the field, you know, we we still keep in contact, and and that friendship uh, it remains. You gonna Facetime Corey down there in Jamaica too, as well, or what? Yeah, we, we <laughs> yeah we always in touch. Nice, man. nice, nice. Still sharing songs with me and keeping his head up, and you know, Good. you always want the best for him as well. He's still our teammate, so he's Ooh. gonna be back. He'll yep, be back for yep. sure. Which one of you guys came up with the with the goal celebration? Whether it be whoever scored the first goal, I genuinely don't know. It was just a whole group thing. Okay, it's a, you know, that's a, a show a way of uh, of. Um, incorporating him in uh in the next goal and mm -hmm. you know he scored enough goals for the union and oh, yeah. we definitely uh want to incorporate him in our in our success and you know he's been a huge part of it so let's talk fun. about some of that success yes, please, absolutely. because this has been a fun season and uh i just want to take it back to the beginning of the year where hey it was a tough three-game stretch uh you know what, what was the mood in the locker room at that point in time when you guys started off with a rough start and then you know what has changed in the last couple of weeks to to have this team look the way they've looked and and on top of the east right now um, I think uh, the locker rooms kind of stayed the same. You know, we always have a, a positive locker room. We have a good group of guys 
we're all pretty friendly with each other so it's it doesn't we don't really beat up ourselves um and i think that's important during the hard times and the good times it's important to remain level-headed um i think um like i, I mentioned it before um last week we had some rough times last year and we stuck together um and this year we're early on we've had more success you know um so it's important that we we stick together we're happy but at the same time not believe that we've arrived because we still have a lot of hard games to come and you know at the same time where people from the outside will will hype us they'll drop us in the same moment so we have to realize that and um be willing to stick to stick to what we know and stick together during the good and the, the bad times i want to talk about the good real quick because i know you got a, <laughs> i know you got an x's and o's question let's talk, talk about like the goal the like let's the talk about the goal that ship how, how? Where, like you know against fc against cincinnati el has got the ball do you see the goalie out of the corner of your eye? And we're going to run the video, so just okay. talk it through. How, how, how did you know you were going to do that move? Um, well, like, I'd made that run a few times earlier on in the game um, and didn't get that, that cross ball, but El Senior's my guy. He he grew up playing street ball, too, so um, playing street ball, you know that it's a, it's a standard <laughs> El Senior dribble in, and guys are going to follow him because of his ability, and I just had to split the two center backs knowing that they weren't I was on their blind side so I just split them and obviously the the goalie had to come out and I didn't have any other angle it's just a FIFA LO yeah type of, type of vibe. Ah, you, gotta, yes. you gotta hit that quick chip and see what happens yes love and it he was close enough to me to where I was able to get enough of chip under it and that was right in our face at the river end and I'm and glad. and I'm saying this right now my favorite new chant is the Beatles I'm not against it, man. I like the song. Yes, it's the best one. And obviously, we're singing it. We're singing it when you're scoring. So when there's Beatles playing, Hey Jude in the in the River End, that's a good thing. So Jim mentioned, I forget which game it was. I think it was maybe the I think it was the FC Dallas game. It might have been. It was one of the recent home games where he challenged you guys to say to take that step up to be the great MLS team. Yeah. As you guys, as a group, how quickly do you, do you respond to that? And and I guess is that a group mentality thing too, where you guys you guys do want to achieve that yeah. kind of step up from you know being in the middle of the pack to being one of the the, t- the elite teams in this league. Um, yeah, it's uh, definitely it definitely came from him. Uh, I remember it was in one of his pregame speeches. I can't recall the game. Maybe it was mm-hmm. that that game. Um, but he did uh, he did relay that message to us, and we you know. Um, we obviously take that to heart, and we took it seriously because, I mean, at the end of the day, you don't want to just be a mediocre team. I mean, you can only have a certain amount of mediocre and medium seasons, so mm-hmm. uh, you don't want to be average. We have enough in our locker room and enough players to where we could be a better team and be one of the better teams in this league, and it's important to establish that early on, um, especially before the season and the schedules get hectic. You want to gain as many points as possible and as many goals, and it's important to do that as a group and important also to keep the ball out of the net and I think we've done a good job of both um, and you want to establish yourself in the league uh, because wins are not just um, are not just soccer they're also momentum and they're also mm-hmm. you know um, psychological so the moment you get that feeling of winning um, when a loss does come you still have enough win in your system to want to get that feeling right away and um, I think we've built that now mm-hmm. um, and now we just want to keep keep it going and keep building off of the wins we've had and try to beat bigger teams now. Well, now you got the, the yin and yang on that where mm-hmm. you just scored six goals against New England. Next contest, back up to Toronto, a team that already played against and, yeah. and they came down here and got that dub. What's your thoughts going back up to Toronto? Is it a little payback? Um, for me, it's never payback. I think the bigger thing is um, Toronto's a strong team, a very good team in the East. They have quality. Um, it's important that we can now prove ourselves against a, a heavier team and following them we have Seattle at home so it's two big tests um, that we want to do uh, well against and grab points there as well not just beating on teams with all respect to the other teams we've beaten um, but now we want to be teams that are um, challenging us for higher spots in the east um, if you could pay attention to Atlanta um, they're starting to gain form as well you know so um, just these little wins, no team is out of it. If, uh, those who know the MLS, a team can be in ninth place one day and then three weeks later they're in third or fourth. So we want to keep sitting at the top of the table. Um, and to do that, we have to beat big teams as well. Sure, sure. This home field advantage you guys have built up now, I think it's five games in a row. You have 
I think it's four more home games before the Gold Cup break. Yeah. How much do you guys as players relish this, this home field advantage and how much you guys are kind of building the stadium into a fortress and and the support you guys ha- have been getting? I mean, home is home. Um, you know, you're always going to be more comfortable on your pitch. You're in your area. You're in front of your fans. You don't have to travel six and a half hours uh, <laughs> to the West Coast for a game. Um, so it definitely plays a big role and mm-hmm. you're just comfortable. Um, you know, you're in your city, and you wanna yeah. you wanna do well and prove this in front of your family and your friends. So, um, it's important that uh, that we continue that. We have uh, another few at home, like you said. So, um, definitely looking forward to to grabbing the maximum points possible before this cup starts and everything gets more hectic. Our conversations with fans, and and you deal with it all the time, and I don't know how you deal with it, but uh, as a player's perspective, I don't know if I'd ever check that at symbol. I just don't know. But, um, you know, look, for the the people that uh, have the naysayers, and that's fine, they want to see a little bit more in July and August, and, hey, we can't do it until you play those games. But uh, my take uh, or my comeback to that is if you just look at the players on the field right now, the new blood compared to last year, and speaking Mm -hmm. to somebody that was here last year, year and now this year Montero Sergio uh, you know just down the list uh, uh, Marco it just feels like there's more depth this season and and I, I mean this in, in in the realest sense quality of players yeah. back on the field um, is that right is that a fair assessment yeah I think it's definitely a, definitely a fair assessment and I think the the bigger thing early on is that we've won more games mm-hmm. early on this this year and it, get, it builds, like I said before, that momentum going on into those months as opposed to trying to play catch-up um, from behind. So it's crucial that we've already started that. And now, like I said, we want to beat some big teams and show where we're at and hopefully continue that momentum building into those months where people doubt again. And, you know, that's that's fair for them to doubt. It's It's all good. I mean... I don't think anybody saw Liverpool coming back yesterday. I definitely didn't. Unbelievable. I had a group chat, uh, and I was the first one to say no chance, and they did it. You know, it's soccer. That is soccer, and, um, you know, at the end of the day, you just, you're the guys on the field. I'm a soccer player. Those guys are soccer players, but they're on the field. I was watching, and they came back. They did what nobody thought they could do. Without their two best players. Yeah, and that's that's yeah. impressive. It's just <laughs> grit, heart, and, and motivation, and good football. So, at the end of the day. And a choke job by Barcelona, right? Yeah. They, um, you know, right? A few a few missed goals, and and that kept Liverpool in the game with that 1-0. And eventually, towards the second half, it opened up for them, and they got some more goals. Who do you, uh, you want to see them play in the championship? I personally don't care. Don't care? Could care less. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I did when I was growing up. I, you know, I followed a bit more and cared more. Mm-hmm. Today, if I have a friend playing, I'll support them. And if not, I just watch and hope for good football. That's, that, I'm a fan of good football and no teams. Sure, me too. I think Spurs Liverpool would be one heck of a final. <laughs> that would be crazy. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Crazy. I'm so, glad you caught that game. What a game! Yeah. Oh my God. So, kind of off the field now. You know, I know you're, you're you. The whole team is kind of out and about in Philly. So what's what's your favorite spot in Philly? Where, obviously, Grand Cafe, I think, is, yeah, the, is the one standard, spot. Yeah, standard. Um, but what, where do you guys go kind of just to, to relax and kind of get away from, you know, the hectic day-to-day stuff and, and kind of um, relax there? I like to catch other sports. Mm-hmm. So usually Phillies games, uh, Sixers games, especially with the playoffs going on, hopefully they grab one, grab one tomorrow. Um, but yeah, uh, I like to go to sporting events. I like going bowling with the guys. Um, invite a few friends. If I have friends in town, I'll take mm-hmm. them to Magic Garden. You know the typical Rocky steps. Mm-hmm. But um, I like to try restaurants. I go to a lot of Latino restaurants in North Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just eating, relaxing. I'm a big, uh, I'm very big on chilling, man. So mm-hmm. anytime I get the the opportunity to relax and rest and just be around loved ones, I get a lot of visitors, mm-hmm. especially this year. Um, so just got get a chance to take them out, go for walks. The weather's gotten a bit better. Um, yesterday was a nice day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go for a little stroll on Penn's Landing. You know, just you know, just soak it in. Who's the best? The bo- who's the best bowler of the group? <laughs> They're gonna tell you otherwise, but <laughs> I got the screenshots and the scores. So <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna say any more. But uh, two of my bowling partner, uh, you know, CJ was. He was okay. Uh, <laughs> he, he was a fun guy to bowl with because he just had fun with it. Uh, David as well. So we had a we have a good group of bowlers, but not at the actual game. 
not that great. I want to talk a little bit about the Sixers. We got because I felt good about coming to this this podcast with you because I was like, at least we could vent to each other. Yeah, man. Yeah, rough one. But before we do that, I have to know more about the celebration. Yeah. Salsa. Is it? I mean, it kind. Of, it looks like a combo of like some stank leg, a little, yeah. you know, a little <laughs> lean with it, rock with it. Like, what, where did it come from? Was it organic? Is it something you thought up a long time ago? Where did that celebration come from? So I have a lot of Latino friends. I think most people know. So I listen. I grew up listening to. I'm a music freak. So mm-hmm. every genre, from every country, I love music. But um, I have a lot of Colombian friends. So it's a type of salsa. It's not actual salsa. It's salsa choque. So salsa choque is a. It's be, It's Dance about on the same rhythm, but um, on the same beat, but it, you throw another, a little more shoulder into it, and there's a few different steps. It's, it's similar to salsa, but with a more uh, modern beat, you know? Mm-hmm. So people that are looking at it and just calling it salsa, they're like, oh, he's not dancing the salsa correct. No, it's salsa <laughs> choque. So uh, shout out to Charlie Davies. I saw your Instagram post today. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's it just came from when I go out with my friends or like uh, house parties or somebody's birthday, we dance salsa choque or we dance vallenato, bachata, um, different kind of Latino musics. Last year I did a bit of both. I would do the salsa choque and sometimes the, bata- the bachata. Um, but this year um, I only have one, so I'm on the salsa choque uh, for the moment, but next one might switch up. Well, we're all for, like I said, the uh, the Beatles song and then the salsa, because we know that means you're putting the yeah, ball in the man, back I'm, of the net. I'm about it, I'm about it. What's, uh, uh, before you get to the, yeah, please what, go. What, is, what is on your pregame playlist? Dude, this, it changes. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so much. It can, it ranges from hip hop, Nipsey Hussle, uh, rest in peace, J. Cole, um, Andrea Bocelli, Mark Anthony, Grupo Nietzsche. Um, I like listening to the Kooks, a little rock in there, uh, some gospel music, mm-hmm. reggae. Yeah, it's, it's all just mixed up. I don't have a specific playlist. Mm-hmm. I feel like if my energy is too high, I need to bring it down with a little bit of classical. And if I'm kind of drowsy with it, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll put something more upbeat and, and try to get my legs dancing in the house while I'm eating and that's pretty much what I'm doing, especially home games. Mm-hmm. And when we're traveling, I'm with Corey, so we're just blasting the music in the room. Who's got the ox cord? In the room, it depends. Oh, I'm it's... what? Like, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm a DJ, I'm a music guy as okay. well. So I would definitely want the ox cord. I usually, it, de- it really depends. Like, if I like some songs that Corey's introducing me to, some new music, or Derek will give me some new uh, Afro beats, then I'll be like, yo, play those tracks and just keep mm-hmm. it running. And if I just feel like throwing on my Latino stuff or a hip hop song that I like, I'll just cut them off because I bring the I bring the pod. There uh, it is. Pill. <laughs> so, so he he gets yeah. he's yeah. got the cord. Yeah. That's I always, what it is. I always bring the pill. All right, right? all right. But I do like their music, uh, mm-hmm. their music taste as well. So uh, I'm open to what they're listening to, and we kind of share it. What does Bedoya listen to? Is he is he? Like, I don't think. Does he have anything? I don't know if we know. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not sure. I think he listens to a bit of. He kind of yeah, mixes yeah. it up, mm-hmm. like you know, some hip hop. I think uh, he'll listen to some uh, some Latino trap um, and reggaeton. He likes, and you know, he's he's pretty broad on the music. So I think he a little bit of everything. But he doesn't have like we don't say like we don't really give Ali the the ox. I don't think. No. <laughs> but I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to it. I think mm-hmm. he has a decent like good taste in music right. as well. So nice, nice. I'm gonna go to Sixers. Is that I, know all right? I know you've been waiting for it. Yeah, because, you know, look, we have we have issues right now. And, and you got uh, – I don't listen to the people out there, but yeah. I think there is something to be said about Brett Brown. And, um, you know, and you could speak on this because you got Joel Embiid who is who's sick right now. It, was he yeah. sick in game three? He was not sick in game three. And look what mm. he performed. He gave you 33 points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Game four, game five. He's sick. That's the difference. But – would you be opposed to to sitting him? You know, like if you're Brett Brown, like don't you know? It, it's it, tough it's a, because Joe's it's gonna a, always want to play. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough it's a tough call. You know, it's a, he's the player. The player wants to play. You know what I mean? And with his abilities and what he brings to the court, it's it's tough, man. As a fan, in this case, it's not my sport, so I could be a fan, and and I want him on the court. But obviously, you know, as the athlete side of me is like, eh, are you good? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still have faith tomorrow night at home hopefully bring in uh bring in a dub and then go to toronto and and claim the claim the east because we're not about the north no it's going down yeah. it's going to seven yeah, it's yeah. going to seven they're gonna step up to, yeah i definitely hope so ben simmons yeah 
he's not the he's not the perfect player. I love yeah. Ben. I think I mean all star. Mm-hmm. He's twenty two years yeah. old. I think you know when we talk about Ben Simmons, we got to talk about what he's going to look like in two years from now. It's mm-hmm. not the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, but just your thoughts on Ben Simmons when you watch him play? I think I think he's an incredible passer. Has a good drive. I think there's uh, just that last step is the jump shot. Once he gets that, man. They, you think he's going to get it? I think so, man. I think he. I think he's dedicated. I. I don't think I know he's dedicated to the game. You know. Um, <laughs> He's a hard worker from what I've seen or what I've heard. So um, I think he's going to be one of the most dangerous players in the leagues in the upcoming years once he gets that shot down, um, mm-hmm. once he has that jump shot. I, I mean, it's his job. He knows he knows more than anybody that's criticizing him for it that, um, that he needs to add that component to his game. And I'm sure he will. Um, and he'll be... It'll be deadly. Do you think there's something mental there? Is it something that, like, because you see him pregame, he shoots it fine, and, and it's just, you know, like he has the ability to attack the rim and just yeah. go hard on people, but he's 22 years old. So I, I'm not trying to make yeah. him out to be mm-hmm. LeBron James or anything yeah. like that, but, and it took LeBron a little, a little while, while to get while. that. It did take him a while. So and he developed one. So is it is it something, you know, just mentally that, that blocks him at that point in time? Is it, well, I mean, he may not feel like he's, he's prepared enough for it. For game type situations, you have to also understand that you're dealing with Philly fans. Philly fans are tough, man. Like uh, a few missed shots, and he's getting booed. You know, mm-hmm. so um, that's not an excuse, but it's understandable um, if he hasn't worked enough at it or doesn't feel that he's prepared that side of his game. Yeah. Um, maybe he's fearful and doesn't want to take certain shots, but I have no doubt that he'll get it down and be be one of the deadliest in the league. And there's no way I'm moving him. Yeah, no, no way. No, I'm no, tra- no, 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 no. He's staying in Philly. No, hundred percent. His jersey's gonna be in the rafters. Yeah, I'm saying it right now. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. You, you kind of hit it, at, and I, I'm very interested to get this because the soccer fan is it ranges from all different perspectives, yeah. especially in different countries. Mm-hmm. From from where you've played before Philly, how do the Philly fans kind of compare to? Are they just unique in their own way, or they? Yeah. Or is there a kind of a comparison to what you saw in Europe or, or through any of your stops in your career? I um, mean, generally, you're, as an athlete, you're always going to deal with the criticism. Mm-hmm. Um, in honesty, obviously, in Europe, these people—it's—it's it's just like a fifth, sixth generation, you mm-hmm. know, seventh even generation game. People have been there um, and involved in the game. Even in my family, my grandfather on my mom's side is a big. Uh, name in Haiti. Mm-hmm. My dad played, so it's been in my line for a few a few generations. Here in the states, um, specifically, I guess Philly. If we're talking about it now, you have people that just got intro- introduced to the game maybe last year. Some people, maybe some people that are in my case, mm-hmm. also um, ranging um, from second or third or fourth generation in the game. And then you have people that really don't care about the game but want to support Philly sports. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, everyone's welcome to, to support, and I think it's it's good for the growth of the game. At the same time, you have to understand whose criticism to to listen to and not, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, some people hop on. I, I get slapped now for, for even complaining about Twitter, but as athletes, we're, we're all complaining about it now. Like, it's just, yeah. you know, people complain um, about what players are doing without full knowledge of the game, like, mm-hmm. you know, like... I don't think some people understand the difference in why this formation goes that way or do this and that. And you read some people's tweets. I read it for entertainment. Like, it's funny. Like, <laughs> some people that are talking about soccer really are yeah. convinced that they know what they're saying. Mm. And you put them in a practice, they'd be dead lost, you know? Mm-hmm. That's like me talking about baking. If you ask me to bake a cake right now, <laughs> with, the re- with the recipe, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Like, I'm not a good baker, and I understand, and I know my role, I know my spot. So if somebody makes me a cake, I'm more than excited and just happy, you know, like, oh, a decent cake, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's, it's even more, it's even more different for our sport because, you know, it's a unique sport. Um, mm-hmm. It's f- new enough in the U.S. in terms of, you know, in comparison to other countries. Um, but, you know, everyone's welcome to, to support. We do get some tough fans during uh, some tough times, um, but we do also have some great fans that we love and we appreciate that do stick with us during the, mm-hmm. during the rough. Um, so... It's uh, there's pros and cons, and I think it's going to continue to grow, and you know we're we're looking forward to that as well. You guys are doing well on the field, and that's all that matters. I got one more, I'm, and I'll we'll wrap it up on this one. Uh, I always uh, am interested in what motivates you, what drives you when times are tough. What do you look back on? That, is there something that you came across years ago that you still have, and and it's your go-to? I'm just curious to know what drives you. What, what what's something that you look at when you need that extra motivation? Um, there's so many things, you know. Um, I'd say f- first is um, God just waking me up every morning, you know. Um, today somebody didn't wake up. Today somebody got in an accident and, and maybe died. 
Um, today, somebody died of a disease. Um, today, somebody got diagnosed with something, you know, and um, it's happened in my family um, where I've had close ones to me get diagnosed with things or um, losing people within two hours before game. Um, you know, it's just uh, things you have to deal with. And I think just the opportunity to go do something that I love, it allows me to shut out every noise that, you know, people that don't know you personally try to create and you just go and do what you have to do. Um, on top of that, um, people know my true story and everything I've been through. Um, you know, the fact that I got back into into a position where I can be a dominant player in a league and, and a player to talk about and a uh, dangerous threat is... is um, it took a lot, a lot of overcoming, um, something maybe I deserved years ago and I didn't get because of so many different reasons. So the fact that I get to do it now uh, on a weekly basis, nobody's going to stop that or take that from me, no matter what people do or say, I can care less. And I, um, you know, I take all the negativity and I, I feed off of it. It also motivates me and, um, and I do it for my family. Um, the cities I grew up in, between New York and Miami, you have, uh, in Miami you don't have anybody that really came out um, you know, in recent years to have been able to go as far as I did and I want to set something for the young kids over there um, to know that there's a possibility and a chance to, to do something themselves and every time I go back I try to you know, relay that message to them I relate that message to them and uh, also for the, for the city I was born in New York it's just uh, you know, the greatest city for me in the world and um, we have that mentality you can make it no matter what you, know, you have to overcome mm -hmm. and no matter what the obstacle is you can, you can do it so I grew up with that, and that's what motivates me every day to, to keep going. And knowing I have family and close friends that support me, that's more than enough uh, to keep me going for decades. Love it. Love it. Fafa, we wanted to get you on for quite some time, man. We greatly appreciate you hopping appreciate on. Having, we know it's a, uh, it's a busy schedule here for the MLS. And last but not least, anyone you want to shout out before we get out of here, look at the camera, shout hey, them again, out. I already <laughs> shot, shot, shotted you guys out with 212 <laughs> 305 New York, Miami. I always got love for you. And, uh, Shout out to my family and all the Philly fans out there. Love you guys. Once again, Fafa Pico hopping on Union Soccer Podcast. Good luck in Toronto, Fafa. Thank you, my much, man. Much appreciated. Thank you, Next time. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Good stuff. Thank you, guys.